The following scene could take place at any hospital during morning ward rounds. In this case, the team consists of a medical student, a junior and senior resident, and a staff physician. We admitted uh, three patients overnight. Would you like to hear about them now? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Mr. Smith is a 66-year-old Caucasian who had a hip replacement two weeks ago. Uh, he comes in now with a swollen leg and difficulty breathing. Uh, we did a blood work and VQ scan, which indicates a high likelihood of uh, a pulmonary embolism. So we started him on an aspirin last night. Unfortunately, this morning he developed profuse GI bleeding, and we had to call in GI to do to emergently scope him. Uh, they are in the OR right now. Why didn't anyone call me? We paged you several times. Well, my pager was on all night. You're, you're lying. I mean, I didn't get any page. But. Anyway, let's get on with it. And if we get sued, it's your fault. And then there's Mrs. Chen, who is a 79-year-old woman. Uh, she came in with chest pain, but it was difficult to get a history from her because she has very limited English. Oh, no, not, not a case of veterinary medicine, eh? <laughs> Okay, the eMERGE doc probably didn't even look at this woman uh, before he referred him to us just because she can't speak English. Why did we admit her? She should have gone to cardiology. And you should know by now how to defer consult to other services. Mary, why don't you tell us about the third patient? This is actually her room, so we can go see her right after you tell us the story. Well, ju just don't stand there. Tell us your story. Oops, sorry. Um, this is Mrs. Lewis, and she's a 36-year-old female who has a history of bipolar disorder for which she was previously on lithium. However, she was switched to Epival one month ago for rising creatinines. Um, she also has a history of hypothyroidism for which she's on Synthroid. She came in with unexplained confusion for one day and then an episode of LOC which resolved. Our investigation showed that she has multiple changes in her blood work, including thrombocytopenia, elevated LFTs, and hyperammonemia. What was the epidural level? Actually, we're not sure. Uh, we've ordered it, but uh, I don't remember seeing the result for some reason. Actually, it wasn't done yet because the patient just came up from ER and we were having a real difficult time getting a vein. So I'm going to go and draw it right now. Excuses, excuses. It should have been done last night. If I didn't check everything, nothing would ever get done. Nowadays, the staff and trainees just don't have the dedication and work ethic we used to have. We used to be one in two call and used to live in the hospital when I was in training. You guys have it so easy nowadays. So you, what are the signs and symptoms of epival toxicity? Um, confusion probably, and I think they get tremors. That's right. They also get dizziness, hypertension, arrhythmias, and signs of CNS depression, including LOC. They can also get metabolic abnormalities. And you, what is your differential diagnosis for hyperammonemia? Um, I, I don't know. Um. Actually, I was reading a little bit about this last night, and epibol can cause hyperammonemic encephalopathy. Why did it take a med student to help you answer that question? You need to hit the books rather than goofing off. Anyways, these psych patients, they always have these really weird things with them. It always ends up being an issue with their medication or sometimes even with their psychiatrists. <laughs> <laughs>